to make a roller texture cover jar and uh, I want to uh, be able to roll the texture deep enough so this is my setup for using some kind of a cylinder in you insert into the cylinder you throw and uh, color so that uh, the clay is fitting on the cylinder tight and uh, also the reason I'm using the newspaper here is that uh, once you insert your cylinder in there if you don't have something in between your cylinder is going to stick on the inside of, the, of your thrown cylinder so this purpose of uh, using a newspaper is to make sure that I will be able to pull out my potent cylinder and using two layers of a newspaper method and also make sure you wrap the two layers it's easier for you to pull it out and uh, you want to wrap up the uh, newspaper individually Okay, I'm talking about two layers, but uh, you want to wrap it up one layer, one at a time. And let me make sure the uh, paper is fitting very tight. And I'm using the slip to glue the newspaper on, not the tape. You can just use the uh, slip. Right, so that is the preparation of uh, my cylinder. And I just pop it in inside of that. So that is the setup. And later, after I throw the cylinder, I will top this inside and then color. Put this aside and for the roller texture i'm going to use this one it's from mkm and let's see the, the number is it's called rm018 okay, rm018 from mkm and make sure your uh, roller is rolling freely okay, without anything that's stuck in it Okay, if that is too white and uh, it stopped it, you can use the sandpaper to slide the sand on both sides, both ends, to make it roll up freely. Right, this is about four pounds. Okay, well, four pounds I measured, I weighed it on my scale. <coughs> Pretty soon I center my clay and uh, you can see that uh, my technique of uh, centering the clay I don't usually squeeze and uh, squeeze the clay to uh, very very tall and then I push it back I am just working on the skin of the clay actually I'm pulling the skin up and down to redistribute the clay that way I can save a lot of energy without using all my force to squeeze in the clay sky high. Um, after that, I can start to open the hole. I'm mainly using my left fingertip to drill from the center. And the right hand is keep on bracing my left while I'm drilling it so that I have support I don't lose my center right until I reach the right thickness usually it's between 
maybe half an inch to uh, or five eighths of an inch, even three quarter of an inch, depending on how tall I want my foot. And usually, usually I would say at least half an inch thick. And after that, I just uh, make my foot wider by moving my left fingertip and just pinch level. So moving the, the tip of my, main, my finger level and then uh, compress it. Compress the foot. And if you have a hard time by compressing the floor, a lot of people have have the same problem. Let me show you my tool. This is my number six compression stick. You can say compression stick. This part here is for compressing the floor. And if you are stretching like a mug, can use the curved side to stretch it. Um, in this case, I'm just using this part here to compress it. Just hold the tool for the center and then uh, use my pressure to push it down. Right, so the, the floor is compressing very flat and what I did was using this corner to squeeze so I have a little indentation on in the corner and this part here is it's in the very center and I make this part here slightly curved so it doesn't gouge it into the clay so that is that uh, my number six compressing stick all about and that was the floor has been built, I could start to lift the clay from the corner. If the clay isn't fairly thick, I can just simply use my left hand to uh, grab the clay to move it up. This is what I usually do, grab the clay and lift it and uh, use my right hand to brace it so it will be more stable. So the right hand is bracing my left thumb and pull the clay from the bottom up. And if the base is getting white, you could always pour the clay in so the base will be smaller. Right, and then I'm going to lift my wall up from here. And for me, I was using my fingertip, fingertip inside and squeeze out. So there's a little belly here. And now I'm using my right thumb to fit underneath of the belly. And you can see that I'm extending my left thumb to hold. So my left hand is going, doing like this. This part here is like Hold it on the side. And keep on pulling the base so it becomes smaller and smaller and then slightly color 
color to make it taller. Right, I'm gonna pull it one more time. Since I'm not going to make it very tall because I'm going to stretch it, so I would still like to have a certain kind of a thickness. I would say this is about quarter of an inch, a little bit thicker than quarter, quarter of an inch. And also I like to see if uh, my supporting cylinder, it's actually from the PVC pipe. And I think this is good, so I will just drop it in. And uh, this part here, the bottom is it's slightly stiff, so before I drop it, I usually like to wet it, get wetted to put some water there to make it slightly softer. Okay, so that is good. And then um, I'm gonna use my hand to color. So always color from the base so that you don't trap the air in between. Color slowly. The key is that you want your, your clay cylinder to fit it very tight on your supporting cylinder. Okay, so that's good. And then um, I am going to use, use a rip to smooth the surface to remove all the throwing mark. Um, the rib you've seen is my wooden rib number three. The design for this rib is I make both sides here, both ends here, slightly curved so you don't end up with dragging some knives from both corners. So that is this number three wooden rib designed all about. And before I roll my texture, I want to make sure that the bed is nice and clean. Alright, and the people ask me why them I'm throwing so clean. Uh, there are secrets to throw very clean is that first you use uh, more slip than water because the slip is sticking on the surface. But water, if you have water, water is not sticking, water is coming down and then going to your splash pan. That's one thing. Um, the, the other thing is when I throw, you see that my wheel speed isn't very fast. Okay, going slow. So the centrifugal force is not um, pulled the slip or water 
down on the splash pan. So that's the uh, two main main thing that for throwing very clean, you don't want to throw very fast. Slow down, get slow down the speed of a wheel, and use more slip. That's all. Now I'm ready to roll, and uh, sometimes if you don't want uh, get this part here wet, it might stick. Okay, after a couple roll, your your roller will stick with the clay. So to prevent that from happening, my suggestion is you wet it. Okay, you wet every time when you move up, you wet your roller. Okay, you wet your roller and have a support here. Hold hold on to your supporting cylinder inside. Hold it down and. Uh, I like to pull it up this direction instead of going like horizontal because it's very hard to find where you start it started and then where it end to match it. So if you go horizontal, you will see that the matching the line, the same line is not perfectly fit. So that's why the reason why I am rolling vertical. And I also, when I'm rolling, I don't always roll it all the way till the rim. I still want to keep the rim nice and perfect, untouched. Because later on, I need to use that perfect rim to get a better, if I want to close it. If you uh, push it all the way, you might mess it up and later on, it's hard to get it uh, perfectly formed. So that's why. I usually leave about half, at least half of inch to one inch without rolling all the way up. And now, up to the point, see that I have about this much, and I need to calculate how many more, maybe four more, so I will need to evenly distribute. Right, so this is how I roll the technique of how I roll the texture. Like I told you that, uh, if you have two layers, it's fairly easy for you to pull up the supporting cylinder. And um, it's PVC pipe. And then you want to pull the inner layer of the paper first. Okay, pull it out, it's a lot easier this way and then carefully remove the outer layer of the paper uh, and you can slightly roll it twist it and you want to do it slowly because if you pull too fast too soon the paper might break and got left over inside so Okay, looks like I'm inside. Not, not any uh, piece of the paper stick onto the wall. All right. Now, after I pull out the cylinder, the inside is fairly dry because uh, the paper is absorbing all the slip and the water. So I need to put some water to make it slippery. And also the uh, very bottom corner is slightly you see the wrinkle, slight wrinkle there. So I'm using my sponge to smooth the corner. Right, and now I'm going to start to stretch.
right? I'm making a covered jar, so this part here, the neck, doesn't need to be very tall. Right, so measure the width of uh, the body for fitting the lid. Okay, so that is the body part for this roller texture power jar. Making the lid, I can um, emphasize you don't need to have a very wide base since I'm throwing my lid upside down. So that bottom, meaning the bottom part is going to be the nub. So you can squeeze it in so the shape looks like a doorknob. Doorknob to open the door, the doorknob. And then make a shallow bowl, not too deep, but slightly curved. And pull out the edge while leaving the edge slightly thicker so you have room for you to have the room for making that gallery. Um, you can use the finger slightly pinch so you have a original shape of a gallery and uh, make sure it is wide enough right this is perfect then uh, for making a gallery actually you need to use a very uh, sharp corner and this is my tool number one, the wooden tool number one, shin tool. Very sharp corner. And I'm going to use the corner to compress the gallery. Before I do that, I will make sure the inside is nicely formed. I'm using this part here, my thumb, very nice curve, and use the curve to push that. And then I'm using the gallery, the nice 90 degrees corner here, slightly support on both inside and the bottom. And then you just push down with the gallery, with the nice 90 degrees corner. chamois to smooth the edge and clean this up Right, so that is how I make my uh, little jar. And uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.